I'm Rose. Welcome to my channel. It's pretty incredible how much a book can have an impact on your life, but that's definitely been the case for me. It's just that a lot of the essential education that we need to be happy, career, finance, relationships, self-love, spirituality, we never got this education in school, so I really found myself filling in the gap through books. And I can seriously say, if it weren't for certain books, my life could have gone on this trajectory, but because I read the book, it went on this trajectory. So I cannot underestimate the impact that books have had on my life, and I can't wait to share them with you. So the first book that I wanna tell you about is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. This is such a beautiful book. I love this book so much. Easily my favorite book of all time. So even though it is a personal development book, it's disguised as a really fun, easily readable children's tale. It's about a boy, an Andalusian shepherd boy, who goes off on a search for a worldly treasure. And along the way on this adventure, he learns important lessons about following your dreams, listening to your intuition, and understanding that the universe is on your side. Essentially, this is a book about the law of attraction. And I read this right when I was finishing college and just starting my first job. And I can seriously say like reading this book is why I had lucky girl syndrome for basically all of my early 20s. Like when I got my first job, I had all these opportunities open up for me. People wanted to help me. I got asked out a lot too, so it also helped me in my romantic life. I mean, just things always worked out for me. I can truly say it's because of the things that I learned in this book. A big reason why I am the way I am is because I believe in the law of attraction, which I first heard about in this book. Now, I am the black sheep in my family. I'm the first person to be debt-free, to start a business. I've lived in three foreign countries before I turned 32. I am not afraid to dream big and go for things because of what I learned in this book. I'm not religious by any means, but this book put me in touch with spirituality and the laws of the universe and really set the tone for how I view the world. Also, it's pretty easy to start getting jaded when life happens. You get older, things don't work out. So even now in my 30s, I try to read this book every once in a while just to get back in touch with that beauty and magic and feeling that we're just not alone in this world when we have a dream that we want to accomplish. Also, this is not on my list of six, but I thought it deserved an honorable mention. If you are interested in reading about the law of attraction, this is a little more of a scientific breakdown of how the law of attraction works and how to apply it to your life. So I also think it's worth a read. I think it's a good companion to The Alchemist. Okay, my next book that changed my life is Mastery by Robert Greene. I really like personal development books that teach you a lot, but don't feel dry. So Robert Greene, he did this really deep dive into the lives of the masters, the people who are the best at what they do. And he really breaks down what were the ingredients that made them so great. So it was really fascinating to read about like Leonardo da Vinci and Charles Darwin and Martha Graham, because we kind of tend to think of masters as people that we could never become that they're just born with this innate talent and you're, you either have it or you don't. But I realized that it's really just the choices and decisions that you make in your life and certain things that we all have control over and we can also become great. I picked up this book in my mid 20s when I was a little bit lost in my career. I didn't know what I really wanted to do with my life, but intuitively I did know that if I wanted the maximum amount of success, fulfillment, happiness, and I wanted to make a lot of money, it would be really important to become really, really good at something. If you're mediocre at something, you're never gonna make a ton of money. Only the people who are the best at what they do make a lot of money. And so I picked up this book to figure out what do I need to do to become the best at something. One of my favorite takeaways from this book is how your circumstances can actually become your greatest gift. It's what makes you unique. So for example, Leonardo da Vinci, we all know him today as the Renaissance man. He was such a pioneer and original thinker in all kinds of fields, whether it was art, physics, science, astronomy. And he became the way he is because he was actually an illegitimate son. I don't know if you knew this, but back then in like medieval Italy, when you were an illegitimate child, you weren't allowed to enter the formal universities. So he never got a formal education. And instead, he just read books and like discovered and did experiments on his own. And that's why he became Leonardo da Vinci. If he'd gone to a formal 
formal education because he was a nobleman's son he would never have become like the creative out-of-the-box thinker that he became so i really love that story another really good takeaway was how it's really important to find your vocation and your calling all of the masters in this book that he talks about discovered what was their passion in life and they were so fascinated by their calling that they were able to overcome all kinds of obstacles whether it was health issues financial issues to pursue that thing that they love doing and they became the best at it because they overcame obstacles so that really validated something for me because i knew that like on one hand i could pursue a job in finance climb up the corporate ladder on wall street but it just wasn't my calling and i knew i was taking a risk to maybe leave that safe track to go find what else i really wanted to do and reading this book made me realize like that's the right decision because that's what's going to lead to the greatest amount of success and fulfillment for me. There were also some good takeaways about other kind of more practical ingredients you need to become a master. One thing is what Robert Greene calls the ideal apprenticeship. So all of the masters put themselves through a period that lasted around five to seven years of intense training where they allowed themselves to make a lot of mistakes and just sort of explore and get good at their craft and that was really insightful for me because nowadays everyone wants instant results we want overnight success and we have zero patience for things anymore so it was a good reminder that good things take time if you want to become a master sometimes you just have to put in the years of effort to get there another critical ingredient was what they call the mentor protege relationship all of the masters in this book found at some point in their lives a mentor who taught them everything and really fast-tracked their way to become good at their craft. So if you are curious like what it really takes to become the best at what you do and therefore make the most amount of money and be the most successful at it, then I think this is a really, really good book to pick up. It's also a really fun read. If you like history and stories, you'll love this book. And now shifting gears a bit, this book is more about relationships and emotional health set boundaries and find peace. I don't know if you're anything like me, but I really missed out on a big piece of relationship education. I mean, my parents gave me everything they could, but they also weren't emotionally intelligent. So I missed out on training about how to have healthy relationships with people and how to have boundaries with them so that I can keep myself mentally and emotionally healthy also. And so this book really filled in that missing piece. It's like a whole degree in relationship IQ because when I turned 32, I found myself getting divorced and that really made me reflect on how relationships should be, what went wrong there. I started going to therapy for the first time and only then I realized that there's this thing called boundaries. Like I didn't even know what boundaries were, let alone that you're allowed or supposed to have them. But boundaries are what keep you safe. Like if you find yourself giving and giving and giving to people or just letting people mistreat you, that really starts grading away at your self-esteem, at your mental health, your emotional health. And then that eventually affects your productivity, your money. I mean, it affects everything in your life. And so I found myself picking up this book because I realized that I was missing out on all this education about relationships and boundaries. It's actually pretty incredible how it really breaks down a very nebulous concept. Like if you've never learned about boundaries, it's very hard to sort of wrap your head around how to have boundaries, what boundaries should I even have, what types of boundaries are there, figure out what my boundaries should be, how do I communicate them to the people in my life, what is the source of not having boundaries. It comes from trauma, by the way. And yeah, so I really love that it breaks it down and things like that. You'll also find that having boundaries will really help you with your finances. If you find yourself always like lending money to people, spotting people, helping people out, and also like giving away your time too, that's gonna affect your finances. You're never gonna have enough for yourself. I feel like this is a must read for everyone. Okay, the next book I wanna tell you about that changed my life is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Joe Dispenza. So I picked up this book at a point in my life when I just wasn't making the amount of money that I wanted to make. I had quit my job. I was sort of navigating, trying to figure out what business I could start, what my calling and career could be. And I was running a bookkeeping business. I was self-employed. I had a couple of clients and I was just stuck 
making like maximum $5,000 a month and I was hustling really hard to do it. And I just had this ceiling of like the amount of money I thought I was capable of making and I just couldn't figure it out. Like, why is my life the way it is? Why can't I just like break through to another level? By that point, I'd done a lot to heal my relationship with money. I was good at saving money. I was paying off my debt. I was organized with my finances, but there was still just another level that I just couldn't reach. Like there was a ceiling. And that's when I realized, well, if I am making the money that I'm making, if I have the results that I have in my life, it's because of the way I am and nothing's gonna change around me unless I change. So I just really wanted to learn more about what it takes to change. What does it take to change basically who you are fundamentally as a person, how you think, how you see the world, what all your subconscious thoughts are. And so this book breaks down why we are the way we are, how the mind and body are connected, and it helped me understand why I act and think in certain ways, and also, of course, how to change that. So for those of you who don't know the author, Dr. Joe Dispenza, he really combines like science with quantum physics and spirituality. It's pretty incredible how he breaks things down. But basically, what I learned from this book is that it comes down to your neural pathways. If you keep doing certain things and you can't help the way you are, and therefore you have results in your life that you may not even like, but you can't even change it, it's because you have these habits, you have these neural pathways in your brain that are very, very well trodden. And your life is actually gonna be the result of all the familiar neural pathways that you always go down. And so the key is to start carving out new neural pathways and make those easier to go down. And this book teaches you essentially how to create these new neural pathways. So if you wanna learn about personal development from a very science-y, quantum physics-y, spiritual kind of point of view, I think you'll really like this book. Okay, another book that changed my life is Think and Grow Rich. So this is a classic for anyone who wants to make more money. This is the book that helped me blast through what I ever thought would be possible for myself. Basically as a summary, the author Napoleon Hill, he interviewed people who created huge fortunes from scratch. John D. Rockefeller, Andrew Carnegie, like people who became very, very wealthy. And he found the commonalities and essentially figured out what is the blueprint for becoming rich. Now there's a ton of ways to make money in the world. You could start a number of different businesses. There's a lot of strategies for making money. But the main takeaway from this book is that getting rich actually starts more in here and in here, it's not about like picking the right strategy or the investment technique. Because from this book, I learned that the formula for becoming rich and creating all the money that you could ever want is to first start with a keen desire to make a certain amount of money. So it starts with an idea, like it really starts here. And then the rest of the book is about how to bring that idea into physical reality. First, you need that keen desire. You also need unwavering focus. There's a couple of ingredients that he talks about in the book. There's like a 12 steps to riches formula that he breaks down. I think the coolest thing I got from this book is we are often trained to think that it takes money to make money, that somehow rich people will get richer. If you don't have money, it's gonna be a lot harder. And this book completely removed that belief for me because it really doesn't take money to take money. It starts with an idea which any one of us can have. It starts with faith and a keen desire and focus. So this book might seem a little bit woo woo and out there, but I'm telling you, it really works. It changed my life. I decided to implement the 12 steps in the book when I was about 30 years old. The first step in the book tells you to first define how much money you want, by when you wanna make that money and how you are gonna make that money. That's step one out of the 12 step process that he lays out in the book. And I remember writing it down. I wanna make $100,000 by X date by teaching people how to get better with their finances. And that's exactly what I did. Over the next few years, I started my YouTube channel. I started sharing about my personal finance journey. I created an online course about how to get started investing. And the first time I sold that course, I made exactly $160,000. It was my first experience of truly manifesting money when it initially just started with an idea. Like I didn't have any money to start. I literally built all of this from scratch. And I followed what the book told me to do. It said, have unwavering focus. 
have a keen desire for what you want. Like never lose sight of what you want and just work on it every day. And I did all these things. So this little book that cost $10, just the ideas that I absorbed from it and by actually doing the steps that it told me to do has literally made me hundreds of thousands of dollars and to this day, millions of dollars. So I just cannot thank books enough for the things that you can learn and what it can do for your life if you actually do the steps. Okay, and now the last book that I wanna talk about, I actually don't have a physical copy with me. I had it on Audible, but it's called The Cashflow Quadrant by Robert Kiyosaki. First of all, all of Robert Kiyosaki's books are worth reading, every single one of them, but this one especially had an impact on me because he talks about how him and his wife, Kim Kiyosaki, they once used to be homeless, and within a few short years, they got out of being homeless to becoming financially free. And he basically breaks down in this book how they did that. And the most mind blowing thing that I learned in this book is what he calls the cash flow quadrant. And it's a quadrant that shows the four different ways that you can make your money. One is as an E or an employee. Another is as an S, which is a self-employed person. You can also make your money in the B quadrant as a business owner or as an investor in the I quadrant. And if you look at your income sources, it will tell you which quadrant you're in. He also explains how depending on what quadrant you're in, you're going to live a different lifestyle and your finances are going to be completely different. And therefore the amount of freedom you have in your life will also be different. And he goes on to explain how as an E or an S, you're an employee or self-employed, you're basically trading time for money, working for somebody else, you're taxed a lot, and there's always gonna be a ceiling to the amount of financial freedom you can find in the E or S quadrants. He also explains how real freedom can only be found in the B or the I quadrants if you own a business or you own investments. And this concept was just mind-blowing to me because I never even thought about the world that way. I didn't know that there were different quadrants that you could live in, and depending on which quadrant you focus on, being in your life will turn out completely differently I feel like most of us are just conditioned to become ease that's the default path go to college get an education get a job become an employee and we don't learn how to make the jump over to the B and the I quadrants where real freedom can be found like schools don't teach us to take your paycheck from your job and to invest it and start in businesses so that you can make passive income from dividends and real estate income and have your money work for you and have other people working for you so that you can have more freedom in your life. And so reading this book made it very clear to me how to plan out my next steps. So when I graduated college, I knew like, okay, I'm gonna be in the E quadrant because I need money to live and this is all I can do for now. But my plan would be to take the money that I earn as an E in order to eventually make the jump over to the B and the I quadrants. I come from a family of E's. Everyone in my family is an employee. But I realized from reading this book that the life that I wanted would never be available in that quadrant. And I never would have realized that if I hadn't read this book. So if you're serious about financial freedom, I highly recommend this book. I also recommend all of Robert Kiyosaki's books as well. I really hope that you will read at least one, if not all of the books that I recommended today. And yeah, thank you for hanging out with me. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.